Training camp is in full swing. The Washington Mystics are back, and so is Elena Deladon. What does it mean? We're going to hear from Elena herself. You are locked on women's basketball. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, hi there and welcome to Wednesday, April 20th. Locked On Women's Basketball here. Howard Megdahl, your host. I am founder editor at The Next. Follow us at The Next Hoops on Twitter or go to thenexthoops.com for our 24-7, 365 women's basketball coverage. And that is, of course, extended here at Locked On Women's Basketball at Locked On WBB. You can follow us every single weekday. Thank you for making us your first listen. We are greatly appreciative. Locked on Women's Basketball is brought to you by Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something you won't find anywhere else is the Shady Rays Insane Protection Program. Not sure if that's trademarked. Probably should be. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair. They will send you a brand new pair if you lose them. And Lord knows I do, no matter what happened. Give them a try, and if you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. It's as simple as that. Plus, 10 meals are donated to Fight Hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays. Exclusively for our listeners, head to ShadyRays.com and use the code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code LOCKEDON for their best sale of the season. So we are in full swing here, and we are talking, again, Washington Mystics basketball. And I say again because... It didn't seem like that long ago, but it was, apparently. 2019, the Washington Mystics were a record-setting offense. I remember talking to Mike Tebow before the season, asking him what his defense needed to be. Essentially, Mike said, if we're top half, we'll be fine because of the way we can score. That's exactly the way it laid out. We're talking about sixth ranked defense in 2019, but they won the WNBA title because they had the most efficient offense we've ever seen. Fast forward to 2022 and things are different. And Mike Tebow's talked about this and we talked to Jen Hatfield earlier this week about it. The idea that the Washington Mystics are not built for offense only or offense first this time around. They're built around their defense. There's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is that they have defenders at the five they simply didn't have. Shakira Austin's a rookie. You're going to be asking a lot of her. But effectively, she is going to learn from one of the best interior defenders in the WNBA. That's Elizabeth Williams. Uh, Ewo was absolutely stolen this offseason. Absolutely stolen. She wanted to find the right scenario. She did. She is earning, this is amazing to me, $90,000 this year. There's an all-star. There's somebody who helped the Atlanta Dream reach the WNBA semifinals in 2018. She's gotten better and better overseas. That is just going to be an absolute steal for Washington, and she's going to be defending at the five. But there's some other reasons too, right? Alicia Clark was not on that team. Alicia Clark was still with the Seattle Storm back then. Missed the 2021 season with an injury, but she is back. And they're ramping her up slowly and carefully. And they're doing the same for Elena. Elena Deladon, in 2019, during what was her second MVP season, took 427 shots, if memory serves. And no other Washington Mystics player shot even 300 times. It was built around Elena carrying this team. Not to say that was not an incredibly talented team. That team doesn't win without Natasha Cloud, an elite defender who is a carryover. That team probably doesn't win without Christy Tolliver, who did a lot for the 2019 Mystics, of course, is now in L.A. It's built differently, and it's got defenders at every position. Ariel Atkins is next level as a player. Ariel Atkins was an important part of that team. Ariel Atkins might be the most important part of this team. 
the side of Elena Deladon and her health. This is a team that is going to win by staying healthy, by having their top five defenders come through from being an elite defensive team and scoring plenty, absolutely scoring plenty. Kristen Williams is going to be at the end of that bench, but to come off and provide a, a burst of offense. This is a Washington Mystics team that has a lot of weapons. Tori Walker Kimbrough is an elite three-point shooter. I personally think Shatori essentially limits what Kristen Williams is asked to do here in season one of Kristen Williams's career. Megan Gustafson is back. She continues to improve. Maisha Hines Allen was a star in 2020, not just a talented player, a star. So there's a lot of reasons for optimism on this team. Erica McCall is somebody who can pull them together. A young vet now. It's still amazing to me. I remember her in college like it was yesterday. And so top to bottom, Mike Tebow has built this team. But it is Elena Deladon's team, right? How healthy Elena Deladon can be is an open question. And she freely acknowledges that. It, it's something I think about a lot, that one of the transcendent generational stars has just had to deal with so much has had to deal with Lyme disease, has had to deal with stenosis of the spine, a degenerative back condition, so many things in between. It is, you know, and you'll forgive the baseball analogy, it reminds me a lot of Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle was a Hall of Famer, a switch hitter. He did things we've never seen a baseball player do before he came along. But there are people, his contemporaries, who would swear and a healthy Mickey Mantle, who again, first ballot Hall of Famer, could have done even more. And we missed, we missed seasons from Elena Deladon that she should have had the opportunity to play and be healthy. And we in basketball should have had an opportunity to cover and see. Elena Deladon is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. She would be a first ballot Hall of Famer if she retired today. But fortunately for everyone, She's not retired. And so now it's up to the mystics who have a ceiling with a healthy Elena and a healthy Alicia Clark. That is as high as anyone in this league. That is every bit as high as a healthy Phoenix Mercury and a healthy Seattle Storm. We still have yet to see full go 100% Elena against full go 100% Brianna Stewart, by the way. When they won that title in 2018, Elena was compromised by a deep bone bruise that would have kept us all out. You could argue even when Elena won in 2019, we didn't get to see her at full strength because incredibly, she had three herniated discs and still carried that team to victory. So for Elena's sake, who's fought back, who's gone through so much, you hope that she's healthy. But really for basketball's sake, and it matters for the Washington Mystics. It just flat out matters. For all their other talented players, I think this comes down to, tell me how many games Elena can play and how healthy she is by the playoffs. And I'll tell you what the Mystics can do. And they know that and they're prepared for it. Now it's just going to be a question of how they do it. So I want you to hear from Elena herself. Um, that's coming up. First, we're going to pay some bills. We're going to talk about Built Bar. Have you tried the puffs? Have you? I'm asking you earnestly because puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. Like if you had told young me, hey, there's going to be a healthy chocolate marshmallow bar in your lifetime, in your lifetime, I would have just looked to the heavens and said, thank you, science. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're delicious. Cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. Oh, my God. 100% real chocolate. Four grams of net carbs, 17 grams of protein. It's not a candy bar. It's a state of mind. So go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get 15% off your order. That is promo code L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off Built.com.
Yeah. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. How are you? I um, just wanted to ask, how does it feel to be coming into the season, just kind of with Michael still with this team? Um, incredible. <laughs> Last season um, was certainly a frustrating one coming in and just not feeling like I was where I needed to be. Um, and this year, like, it's been a whole long time of like figuring out what my body needs, um, a whole different way of moving um, and just having the right team behind me to keep me on court and to also keep me kind of on the right page of like, look, like, yeah, you're feeling great, but this has got to be the bump up or like, we got to look at the entire season and know the importance of being ready to peak at the right time. So um, just knowing that it's a whole different year, I feel so much better. I'm not sitting here needing to stand up because I'm in pain. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest thing. You know, last year, you uh, just had an opportunity to play against her. Mm -hmm. What are some things you keep looking back on and tell what's going on and transpire how we can The biggest thing was kind of a reset of our locker room and just getting a group of people together that we'd come to work, we'd have joy every day. Um, we would have empathy for one another and we'd wanna compete every single day together and do it for the person next to you. That's what made 2019 so special. And it's something that we kind of got away from. So I do feel that in this group. I feel it every time we're together, like we find so much joy in one another and, um, we enjoy competing too. So I think it's going to be a great year. With all the adversity you guys have had to go through with COVID and injuries and everything with this team over the past couple of years since that championship, how special is it going to be? You're going to talk about the excitement of it. What do you think that moment is going to be like first game, May 6th to take the court? It'll be great. It's going to be so exciting for us, for our fans, um, for everybody who's been involved in this organization um, because we have a really special group. We have a group that's been through a lot and have somehow continued to fight and continue to better ourselves and even use off season to get better. Um, so I think it's going to be a great celebration and obviously we'll be ready to compete. For you personally, I know you've had you know, so many peaks in your career and mm -hmm. uh, this past couple of years kind of added a little bit more fuel for you to have some more motivation <laughs> to go out and accomplish even more now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this has definitely been the toughest two years um, in my career. So to be able to have another chance at it and to know the amount of time and work I've put into it is exciting uh, that I can finally be back out there and competing alongside my teammates. So I'm excited. It's, it's a newfound me, <laughs> a newfound joy of the game, knowing that this game was nearly taken from me and could be at any point. Like that's what's so crazy about playing a sport and aging and all that. <laughs> you never know what's ahead or what tomorrow could bring. So the importance of enjoying today and taking every little thing you can out of this day is something I can hopefully bring to my teammates as well and share that with them. Right. A little more for me here. Uh, coach said on draft night, to not look at the last two years for this team ready to go right back out and compete for a championship. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And what, how do you feel, you know, as a team leader about a team like that? Yeah, I, I mean, of course, that's, that's the reason I put this uniform on. Um, I wouldn't have gone through what I went through in the past two years if I wasn't coming out here to compete for a championship. Like, I don't just do this for the paycheck or do this for the heck of it. Like, I want to win. That's really the only thing I care about at this point. And obviously enjoying the time and journey with my team, but I really only care about the winning. Basketball wise, what excites you about this roster? We're deep. And that was something we struggled with not having the same depth um, in prior years. So the excitement of knowing like the amount of people that can come off the bench and bring so much to this team and any night it could be somebody different so um we're deep we we've got some youth but we also have some age <laughs> we've got some faces that have been here before that left us for a little bit and they're back <laughs> so um yeah this is gonna be a great year a great team too are you excited with it being the sorry uh, are you excited with it being the mystic 20th anniversary and to be a part of a team that's been so well established and continues the legacy that was built by the women that has been the one team? Oh, of course. Yeah, to know that we're in our 25th season um, with this organization 
who um, are obviously top notch and do it differently than other organizations uh, is something that's obviously exciting and a reason I came here and um, to continue to compete and you know do the most we can for this organization and lift each other up that's huge so I'm excited about this year. Question for you. Personally, what are some of the goals you have for yourself this following season? <laughs> to be on court, <laughs> um, to be smart in the way I come back. Um, and I think the fun part is I've learned so much about my body and the way I move now. And um, I think I'll be able to play in different ways and exploit different parts of my game and other people's games. So um, I feel like I've got a, a whole different way about me and the way I move, but also a whole different understanding of things. So it's going to be fun to explore those. Lastly, you'll get your roster from a defensive perspective. Yeah. We just talk about uh, what you expect this year. Well. Yeah, I mean, defensively, we are scary. It's going to be so much fun. Um, when you have a team that can – you know, shut other teams down. That really has you go into a game with a different confidence. I don't think we've ever had a team that has this much of a ceiling um, or no ceiling um, defensively. And then we can score the ball too. Like, I think people forget about that. So to have both of those weapons is pretty exciting for me. She is, I mean, she already, Ariel already came in like just so advanced and mature, but she still continues to show a different maturity. Um, she's become more vocal and that's really exciting to, to see. I think USA basketball and competing and winning a gold brought her a whole different confidence um, that I'm not even sure she's aware of, but she just like has it. Um, but little a, she's, she's awesome. I still call her little a, I don't know if she has a problem with that, but <laughs> actually I have asked her. She's all right that I still call her little a, um, but she, she is someone who has developed her game somehow developed her self even like as a person when she's already been, you know, years ahead of other rookies in that way. Um, but she's just like, she's so cool. I love her. Lady on the roster she, I think she's six, six. Yes. And I don't know if it's like through my back stuff, I'm getting smaller. Like maybe I'm shrinking a little, but I, when I first met her, I was like, okay, I'm going to either have to change my height or you're going to have to change your height on the roster. Cause you are tall. Like she is, she looks great. I am so excited. Yeah, Shakira's awesome. She's got an energy and a way about her that is going to be great for the team. Um, she's obviously a phenomenal player. And I think the exciting thing is she wants to continue to develop and she wants to be more of a stretch post as well. So, you know, I'm happy to bring her under my wing and uh, help her with some of that. So I think it's going to be an awesome year for her. She's someone who wants to compete. She wants to get better. She wants to put the time in. And that's really all you can ask for. All right, we'll go ahead and switch over to Zoom, and we'll go to Alexa. Hi, Lena. Great to see you. Um, hey, you mentioned, you. thank you. Um, you mentioned that you learned a lot about your body and the way that you move um, is is even different than last year or previous years. How would you describe that? I mean, we haven't been able to really see you play in the off season, obviously. So, what did you learn about yourself through this past off season, and what made the difference in trying to learn more about your body and where you're at now? Yeah. So everything that I've done in the weight room is even completely different um, and been guided by my trainer here. But um, the importance of my base, which is my feet and the way my feet are interacting with the ground and the way I'm able to push. And um, I feel like my legs have gotten even noticeably bigger, but so much stronger. So being able to use that explosiveness through my legs and stop putting all the pressure on my back. I used to be like a top mover, which obviously puts a lot of pressure on your spine. Now I'm moving through the floor, um, through my feet and my base. So it's, it's helped me to be able to have different options on the court, find different angles, um, and give me more options. Thank you. Howard. Elena, good morning. Uh, good to Hi. see you. Um, 
I'm curious, you know, you've obviously held yourself to such a high standard and put together such uh, significantly high standards throughout your career in terms of stats, in terms of numbers, uh, in terms of even just minutes on the floor. And you've talked about understanding your body in a different way. I, I just wonder, have you changed that thinking in terms of how often you're out on the court? Uh, have you talked to Mike about it? You know, so what's your approach for that part of your game? Yeah, we've already started to meet and try to discuss like what it's going to look like and what my playing is going to look like and also how much sitting I'll be doing because that's also not great. Um, I rather be moving and stay warm and find ways to keep my hips loose. And um, so those are all things we're going to explore even through practice where, you know, we're going to practice literally I'm on for four minutes and then what am I doing in the time that I'm off and what's that look like and what do we have to make sure games look like for me? Um, what space do I need to continue to move instead of just sitting on the bench? So all these things we've discussed, we'll have many, many discussions over it, but that's what's so great about this group. Like we want to prepare and we're going to sit out and look at the entire season and look at moments where hey, maybe that's a crazy travel that I shouldn't partake in, or maybe there's too many games packed into this week and we should figure this out. So um, keeping me straight on that too, where obviously I'm a competitor. I want to play every single game. I want to play as many minutes as I can, but having people in my corner who can help put together the best season possible for me to be you know, the best I can at the right time and the rest of the team to be peaking at the right time. And then just the other side of that is this period of time where you've played, you know, effectively three games in a couple of years is the most time you've had away from basketball on the court, I would guess, mm -hmm. since, you know, the, the first year of college. And yeah. I just, just from, from an emotional perspective, from an intellectual perspective, I'm just wondering what you feel like you've taken away from that. Uh, has it been different? And do you feel like uh, there are specific things that you have locked on to uh, in terms of the way you think about the game over this period of time? Yeah, it's definitely, it's different. Um, but I think with age, with knowledge, with finding different ways um, to stay involved in the game mentally, um, I feel like I'm able to find my rhythm in different ways. And I challenge that rhythm in the weight room. I challenge it in the way I practice. Um, so I think when I was younger, I needed a bunch of games. I needed to be playing all the time to feel my rhythm, to feel efficient. Um, now I've gotten smarter, I'd hope. <laughs> um, I have a whole different awareness for myself, but also the game and ways that I can you know, exploit other teams or ways that I can impact my teammates without always having to be out there and putting my body on the line. So I think I've learned so much and been an observer for so long that now that I can get into it and play, um, I've got a whole different way of thinking about things. Thanks, Elena. Mm -hmm. Jen. Hey, Elena, always good to see you in uniform. Um, <laughs> Coach T mentioned on draft night that he thought that you and Alicia Clark were the best at bringing the team together and encouraging bonding and that they really missed that with you guys both out and not traveling last year. And so I'm just curious, number one, how you personally go about that team bonding. And then number two, if you felt like you and Alicia were able to develop a rapport last year that is going to translate on the court this year. Yeah, I actually said to AC the other day, I was like, I didn't know how much I needed you in my life. And now that you're here, you, like we're forever. Uh, she's like, you know, we're like peanut butter and jelly. Like she's just the perfect piece that I've needed. Um, and yes, through this off season and what we've both gone through um, with like big surgeries and trying to, you know, figure out our bodies and having days where we're frustrated or days where things are going well but having each other to support one another and know like we're both going through kind of the same thing has been huge. And um, I think obviously she's a phenomenal leader. She's incredible on the defensive end. I'm so excited to learn from her um, in that aspect, but just to have someone to lead uh, with me. And obviously we've got a ton of great leaders on this team, Tosh, Ariel, um, Tiana's back. So we just have a really great group uh, that any day um, anybody can lead at any time or step up at any time. But AC is, she's pretty awesome. And like I said, I had no idea how much I needed her until she came into my life. 
All right, we'll go ahead and finish up with Matt Paris. Um, hi, Elena. Just was kind of curious, going back to the, the stuff about your body, you talked about the way you moved. Is that, is that just more so like with how you uh, attack rehab and that sort of thing? Or, or do you mean like actually on the court, the way you try and post up, for example, like is that different? Like how, how do you expect it on the actual court to affect your game? Yeah, it's every aspect of life, like movement, um, getting out of my bed in the morning, what my feet feel like on the ground, walking my dogs to being on the basketball court. How can I attack this angle? What push do I need out of my foot to get me onto this foot? Um, so literally everything I do in a day, it's all in support of movement and my base. Um, I don't like separate it anymore where it's like basketball, this, this, and this, like the way we move in life should always be supporting, you know, from down, from below up um, in a healthy way. And I think it's something I never had any type of this awareness. And I'm grateful for especially um, the, the head trainer here who works with the Wizards, who's been, you know, my like guru throughout this. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's all, all walks of life, I'm constantly, you know, thinking about my movement and how that can support my body. And, and that doesn't sound easy at all, just because, you know, you're, you're used to walking a, a certain way your whole life. Just, what was that right. process like, trying to retrain yourself? If it was easy, we'd all do it, you know? Um, I think that's what I like about this challenge is knowing that I have the mental capacity and the, you know, will to do it. Um, because if I didn't, I think I'd be done. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Elena. Now that you've enjoyed Locked On Women's Basketball, check it out. Locked On NBA. The men's lead exists too. And we cover it in depth every single day. Locked On NBA.